Now, let's look at the second example over here. We are going to use the same. We are going to use the same um, curve, space curve, because this is a simple one. But this time, let me draw first the curve again, space curve, and this is z, this is y, this is x. And here, we don't use two anymore, just say one, and one, okay? So the curve looks like this, starting from over here, and goes up, goes around, and around like that. T is uh, going up. So this time, we're going to try to find the arc length when t is between 0 and 2 pi. That means we're going to try to find essentially one round, one segment of a slinky, right? When you circle around, you get 2 pi, right? Um, if we look at from the top, this is a circle. Some of us may think that's going to be the circle's circumference, but we will see that's not true. So how can we find um, the arc length? Here, we're going to use a little bit um, analysis over here. Suppose you have a space curve like this. Okay? How can you find its length from, say this is t is equal to a, and here t is equal to b. And remember, we are going to use velocity as our guide. And this is the trajectory of the object, and we're going to look at the velocity. First of all, we will use the integration idea, because this is a curve. It's not a straight line. So how do we do that? We're going to divide this curve over here into many, many um, short segments. Each segment is for delta t. So you, over here, you look at a small time period to see how much it has traveled. So it's over here. And then this is the time, and then we need to look at the velocity, or the speed. We need to look at the speed, right? Delta t times speed, that's going to be equal to the distance. And if we add up all the distance using integration, then we're going to have the arc length. Now, what is the speed we already talked about? Uh, we know that um, this is the velocity vector. Um, the velocity vector, it takes three derivatives. These are actually uh, velocities component in three different directions. And then speed over here is the magnitude of the vector and the square root over here x prime of t plus y prime of t squared and plus z prime of t squared so that's pretty straightforward and then the shorter distance this one we call delta s okay delta s is going to be equal to your speed at that moment times delta t, okay? And the entire arc length is going to be a definite integral from a to b, and then you have this integral over here. x prime of t squared plus y prime t squared plus z prime t and squared, and then dt. So this is so-called the arc length um, formula between A and B, okay? Now, once we have this formula, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna ca calculate what is arc length when t, this one over here, t is equal to zero, and this point over here, t is equal to pi over, uh, two pi, a complete um, circle, right? A complete cycle over here coming back. Think about this as the trajectory of a, a fly. All right, so now we're going to see the total distance over here. S is from 0 to 2 pi. 
And since we already calculated the derivatives, and also this is pretty straightforward, we're going to look at the derivative of cosine is negative sine t squared and plus derivative of sine t is cosine t squared. And then derivative of t is 1, and it's 1 squared, and then dt. We see how easy it is because we remember the formula that sine squared plus cosine squared is exactly 1. So over here, we have 1 plus 1 is 2. And we then have root 2 integrate from 0 to 2 pi. And then we have what? We have 1 dt, right? So this is exactly root 2 times 2 pi. Now, if you look at um, the projection of this helix onto the xy plane, you have a circle. So this one over here is way bigger than the circumference. It's actually um, multiplied by root 2. This is way bigger than 2 pi, which is the circumference, right? of the unit circle. OK. All right, and um, that's all for the second example. And we will have some simple exercises later on.